things we need to talk about before we can get into the strategic derivatives and that is leverage and hedging. So with uh, leverage you're basically taking uh, debt or margin and uh, using it to increase your exposure to an investment with the hopes of increasing your profit. Uh, the mechanism for doing that might be uh, it, 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 there's very different ways and it's very com can be very complex but it's basically ratcheting up your exposure. Uh, the way that everyone is familiar with uh, using leverage is when you buy a mortgage. You're using a small amount of money to buy a large amount of house. If the house goes up or down in value, you are responsible for all that change. So in some cases, uh, if you used a small amount of capital to buy a large amount of house and the house went up in, in value, you keep all of that profit even though it only costs you that little bit of capital. So. That's kind of the way you, an investor or a speculator would use leverage to their advantage. All right, so your buddy has an idea for a concert. Uh, he's looking for investors. He believes he can return one of a 100% return on uh, the investment for his investors. Uh, so a couple of you are interested. Let's say person A and person B. Uh, let's say you have $10,000 to invest. Now person A is interested in using leverage to increase their exposure uh, on this investment to you know, increase their profit and their return. Uh, so he has $10,000 of collateral. Uh, he wants to use that to get a, a loan for the same amount, giving his total investment, uh, making it $20,000. Uh, he goes to a bank and they uh, are not interested, so he just uses a credit card. The credit card charges him 16% interest. Uh, person B takes no additional leverage. They just use the $10,000 that they have as an investment. So the total investment All right, so the event goes off. It is not quite as successful as the friend had hoped it didn't achieve the 100% return to investors But there is profit and the profit is shared evenly among the investors. So let's say it just generated 50% of the invested amount. So the profit person A would get with their increased revenue from their increased investment uh, minus their cost of their debt would still be greater than person B. That's just from their increased exposure. Uh, another example would be using stocks. So person A invest $10,000 in shares of X company XYZ, which is $25 a share. Four hundred uh, shares. So they spend all 10,000 on shares. Person B uses options. So uh, options, an options contract is 100 shares of uh, the underlying asset. So to get the exposure of 400 shares, they would only need four contracts. Each one of these contracts for a $25 share would be about $40. So their total investment would be only $160. And uh, let's say a person C uh, because they have ten thousand dollars, let's say they use all ten thousand on contracts. So, well, so we know it's forty dollars a contract. So they just spend, and that comes to two hundred and fifty contracts. So they're also 
they've spent their entire 10,000 on options contracts. All right, so we'll do two cases, the good and the bad. So good, let's say XYZ increases $1. So the revenue for person A with is $26. Profit is revenue minus his investment, and the yield is profit over his investment. So, for the options guys, the difference between uh, two strike prices, or the difference between a strike and the next strike, is $100 of profit. Uh, so, the new contract would be worth $140 approximately give or take could be all over the place but we're just going to move forward with that so the revenue would be $560 same profit appropriately and much much greater yield because they only invested $160 and for this person the revenue would be insane at 35 grand the profit would be 25 grand. Now let's do a bad example. So in this case, the stock moves the other way. The uh, price declines to $24. The person who owned the shares would now be facing a loss. On their investment negative four hundred dollars the person who invested in the contracts the contracts would now only be worth five dollars that he bought for 40 so because of the increased exposure of the derivative they're being completely wiped out is is a uh, not as devastating to the portfolio as the person who owned all of the shares Whereas the person who fully extended themselves would suffer a considerable loss and be almost completely wiped out from their original investment.